Hi everybody, and welcome back to NorCal Slot Car Scene. Uh, in a previous video, we looked at the Revo Slot Datsun 510 and went over the specifications and how it compared to the other Revo Slot Group 2 sedans. In my opinion, it's definitely the front runner right now for the car of the year for 2024, but we've got a long way to go. In today's video, we're going to go through the build process that I used to build the 510 for non-magnet wood track racing. So all the techniques we use today can be applied to any of the other Group 2 sedans. So let's get to the build. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the chassis and the modifications that I've done to it. Here's an overall shot. Now let's get into the specifics. I replace all the chassis screws with Torx T6 screws from Sliding Plus. I use Torx T6 screws in all my cars, so the Revoslot Datsun is no exception. Here's the part number from Slotting Plus for the screws that I use. I also replace the motor mounting screws as well as the body mounting screws. You can see here the super flathead screw gives you more clearance which allows me to run the body a little looser and not worry about the screws dragging on the track. The brass nuts that hold the two chassis pieces together are 5 millimeters. I use a standard 5mm socket instead of a nut driver because you don't often change these at the track and if you need to it takes up much less space in my pit box. Revo slot cars come equipped with ball bearings instead of bushings. As with most bearings they come packed with grease to increase the lifespan but we want these to spin freely. I flush the bearings out with lighter fluid and then reinstall a light drop of oil. The bearing in the right is as it came out of the box. The bearing on the left has been flushed and is much freer spinning. You want to do the same thing with the rear axle bearings. Loosen the motor and move it away from the gears to make sure that the axle is aligned properly and the bearings are spinning freely. When using bearings, you can't have anything rubbing up against the outer race of the bearing. Revoslot supplies a spacer that rests against the inner race of the bearing. I decided to use a 3mm collar that has a built-in spacer. Using the collar allows me to change tires without having to readjust the lateral play in the axle. Because the motor is in an angle winder configuration, any lateral movement on the rear axle slightly changes the gear mesh. This can cause the car to be noisier and actually affect the handling. The good news is, since Revoslot uses bearings, we can adjust the rear axle so there is zero lateral play. When I put the collar on the axle, I noticed that the set screw was actually hitting the chassis. I used a rotary tool to grind the set screw flush with the collar. To set the gear mesh, I adjust the pinion gear so it's very close to the spur gear. And then I rotate it so I find the high spot, marked here with a dot. I'm trying to find that area with zero backlash. Now that I've found the high spot with zero backlash, I rotate the spur gear to make sure I have minimal mesh around the rest of the gear. Once I find that spot, I break the gear in for about a half an hour at about 5 volts using a polishing compound. The polishing compound takes the high spot out and now I've got minimal backlash all the way around the gear when the break-in process is completed. The stock wires on the reveal slot don't necessarily need to be changed, but I would move the shrink tubing forward and put a small piece of tape to hold it in place on my car, I did change out the wire to a more flexible wire. The reason for this is I found that the stock wire was interfering with the body movement next to the motor. The smaller diameter wire solved this problem, and I used blue tack to keep it in place. Normally, we run the front lead wire flat against the chassis going into the guide, but the body on the Revo slot cars is fairly tall, and you don't need to worry about that. You can see how I've looped the wires going into the guide, and the guide centers perfectly. Because I run on wood tracks, I did replace the stock guide with the wood guide that comes included with the car. I also replaced the stock braid with NSR soft braid, which works a little bit better on the wood tracks. The stock tires are 30 shore, and they work fine, but I do have a set of G25 tires mounted up when I need a little bit more grip on some more home tracks. When you're mounting your tires, keep in mind that the rib in the center of the tire that mates with the wheel is not in the center so you can put the tires on backwards. As for other setup tips, I've tried what a lot of other people have done and used tape between the two chassis sections 
to quiet the car down. But I think the most important thing in quieting the car down is getting a good gear mesh. I have been experimenting with tape between the two chassis pieces on the top of the chassis to dampen the movement. But this is probably something you'll need to experiment with on your own track. So there you have my setup tips for the Datsun 510 for non-magnet wood track racing. Thanks for watching. This is Jim Rose with NorCal Slot Car Scene, and we'll see you at the racetrack.